about inserts in PE and about three years ago I was given the opportunity to go to Cardiff on an inserts conference which I thought would enlighten me as to what inserts was but it didn't I'm afraid it was a brilliant conference but it didn't tell me anything about inserts so I went to Paula and she gave me some uh, inset if you like after school about what that was and I went back to school because I was really ashamed that all that data that's created through inserts was lost in transition for students who come to our school and I asked whether we could uh, become an insert school. Anyway, that hasn't, that hasn't happened. But that's why some of you will get an email from me at the end of the summer term begging you for the data. Please, can you send me the levels that you've got for your students? Because that's the only information that comes up with them to the secondary school. So when they arrive with us in year seven, they start off and we do an induction program with them. Basically, we spend four weeks and we look at their performance in basketball or a competitive activity that's not football. We look at a performance in a racket sport and we do some gymnastics with them. And at the end of that, we've only judged performance. So we use the inserts data that's generated and we use that to assess whether students' ability in, uh, sorry, to explain things, their knowledge and understanding of the sport is high. Because all we've done is taken a snapshot. And I know that that's, it's a bit of a dodgy subject at the moment, setting, but we do set our students in PE. Um, and in fact, if we were forced not to, then I would have done a complete cycle of education, because when I first came out of college, it was all mixed ability, mixed gender, everyone together. I'm afraid we've moved quite a long way away from that now. Um, so we set the students, and really that's where we start. Our baseline data is all from our inserts that we're able to get, um, and then from there we do assessment in PE. So this, the next part of this presentation is simply about what we do at John Bright for assessing students in, in PE. You've got to be aware that you've got several masters. We want to have data so that we know whether our teaching and learning is effective and uh, on how well the students are progressing. But it's also data because other people will scrutinise how well we're doing. And so we have to be aware that data is used by a range of diff different people in different ways. In terms of the students, we give them a booklet. Oh God, that's strange. <laughs> Sorry. Um, the students get a booklet like, like this. Let me move that and just put those on. Um, and this is a record that stays with them through Key Stage 3. So it's all paper-based. We tried electronic stuff and it just didn't seem to work for us. So the students will um, be, have a target at the start of uh, a scheme of work or a module and they'll write down what they want to achieve in that. By the time they get to year eight, they'll have already done a year seven one. So they'll say, well, last time I was assessed in this particular activity, I got level whatever it was. And then we use uh, level ladders. So these sorts of things, which you're probably not going to be able to read, but it doesn't, doesn't really, really matter. The idea is that if this particular person was graded at level five and they showed some characteristics of level six, then next time they sit down ready to do that same activity in year eight, they can write a statement, a target, using these success criteria, the same criteria that the teachers are going to use to assess them, and say, well, look, I... I think you could have this, this is your target, although we're going to deliver to the whole of the group, your particular focus might be that one. And that allows the student to take ownership of their own learning to a degree, um, and it also keeps us in check, because the next thing we decided to do was to introduce rich tasks. I'm not quite sure where the word rich comes from, but they're the GCSE, the idea of the GCSE tasks, which are set. So we've agreed as a faculty to do certain tasks in, in all of our activities. And those tasks are given to the students. And that means that whenever we're assessing, we can standardize and moderate throughout the faculty. One of the big issues that we have, staff were perhaps more able to assess accurately compared to others and despite the fact the huge amount of work that's gone in key stage three we still find certain staff just seem incapable of giving certain levels when they perhaps should do and by setting rich tasks we try to standardize a bit more accurately across the faculty so sort of thing I mean is this where um, if this is gymnastics the students then 
a series of things they have to achieve. And really importantly, um, this is how we're grading them. So if you can do that, you're at level five. If you can do that, you're at level six. And um, we find that really useful. And it develops a conversation, um, not to show you my ineptitude, but I managed to copy these things down, the data down incorrectly. And a group of students came straight down after that was then sent home and said, oh, you told me you were at level, I was at level six upper in this and you've put down for a six lower. And I said, well, if you look in here, you're, f oh yeah, you're right. Sorry about that. Um, and that was good. It, because they, are actually, they actually know where they are and they know what they're doing um, in, 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 our, in our subject. That's, um, it doesn't mean anything, it's just a floor plan. The point is that at the end of year nine, all students from all staff will do a sequence on that floor plan. We can record that using iPad and, uh, and show the teachers, well, what did you think of that? Well, I thought they were that grade and I thought these were that one. So that's what we're doing at the moment. I've mentioned a bit about data. We, um, as I said, don't do inserts, which is a great shame. We, we use a thing called SIMS, which is a, a huge package that most schools have used for registration. Um, and that's all we have for recording. So teacher assessments um, go on to a massive spreadsheet, which you won't be able to see. But these columns represent teacher assessments in different activities. And SIMS will add those up. So all the competitive activities are seen in one place and the, the top competitive activity is marked, then the same for health, fitness and well-being, and creative and all the rest of it. In our school, we have six assessment points in a year. So six times a year, we will look at what we consider to be an average grade and put that down here saying, this is what we think this student will achieve by the end of the year. Um, and that's, and that's scrutinised quite a lot. And I'll, put, I'll talk a bit more about that later on. But that happening six times gives us a real continual update on how well students are progressing uh, across the key stage. The other thing that we've started using now is something called Four Matrix. And um, when I said that data gives us several masters, the thing that about Four Matrix is it allows other people to scrutinize what we do. So the previous slide was good for the students. Four Matrix delivers uh, something that looks a bit like, like this. And before I talk about the slide, this actually isn't a year nine one, this is a year eight one. So this year eight, what, what it does is, it says if the students came in at a certain level and they're now at a certain level, then if they're in the green zone, they're on track to achieve three levels of progression. So if they left um, year six on a four upper, we would expect them to do five upper, six upper, seven We don't manage to do that with everybody. I'm sorry. Microphone. So students in the white section there, we might be saying, is, is, the perhaps, the, is it perhaps that they're superb at swimming and superb at athletics? We haven't assessed that yet. Or is it that we could intervene in some other way and try and encourage them to do better in some other assessment? If they're green, we're happy. And if we're purple, we're really happy. Unfortunately, I said, this is a year eight one. What happens when they get to year nine is they all tend to slide this way a little, a, a little bit. But my conversation in school with my line manager will be about this using this thing called four matrix. And really, it's very simple in key stage three. It's actually brilliant for, uh, for assessing examination groups. So it's used a lot in, in, in school at the moment. Um, I mentioned intervention because I think it's really important that um, it's not seen as we're just measuring students and, and, and watching. There is, the whole point of this is, is that there is intervention. And when I speak to my line manager, they'll be saying, this student here, who actually has a name rather than just a number, is not achieving so well in this. What are you doing about that? And I say that's particularly powerful for examination subjects. Um, and the final thing we're doing at the moment I said it's difficult for us to achieve three levels of progression. We're just not a school that seems to be able to do that, whether that's my fault or our fault or the students or whatever it is, we really struggle. Some students do, but not all students. And so for us to get into quartile one, we'd be looking at more students getting into, uh, into that sort of purple section, the three levels of progression, more students doing that than we have at the moment. So we're looking at students who perhaps are really good games players, who perhaps
who have got a lot bigger in year nine, who are not as able to support their weight, and maybe saying to them, well, look, perhaps we'll forget gymnastics and we'll do some trampolining instead, or find other ways of moving students around. So in a way, we treat year nine a lot like we used to teach GCSE. We've got to be a little bit clever and not to manipulate it, but just to give them a better opportunity to achieve those, those levels. Okay. And sorry, it's not really a talk about inserts, but here's a talk a little bit about assessment in Key Stage 3. When I email in the summer and say, please, can you give me your data, it's a really, really useful start to us and uh, for us in our assessment. I can't stress that enough and thank everybody who does send the information through. It is really well used. Thank you.